If you've watched any of my monitor reviews before, you'll know my preference for 1440p 27 inch high refresh rate displays. For me, it's the, the perfect balance of pixel density and sharp and crisp images, but also smooth and responsive gaming. It's also the option that a lot of you guys seem to be very interested in. And the thing is that most 1440p high refresh rate displays sit at between 144 hertz and 165 with a couple of options like Gigabyte's M27Q peaking at 170. There are a few 240 hertz models, but they tend to be VA panels, which aren't quite as good. But this, the FI27Q-X from Aorus, well, if this doesn't get you excited, I'm not sure anything will. This is a 27 inch, 1440p, 240 hertz IPS monitor. Yeah, it's sweet. Let's take a look at just how sweet though. Of course, first, if you haven't already, consider subscribing for more videos like this one every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Like I said, this is the Aorus FI27Q-X. It's effectively the new bigger brother to the Dash P version that I've already reviewed, link in the cards above. Now this clearly takes the reins as one of the best 1440p high refresh rate displays on the market with its balance of ultra high refresh rates and also stunning panel quality. They even quote 100% Adobe RGB coverage for this thing, which makes it pretty much the, the perfect all-rounder. Now, more laughably and clearly falsely, they do also quote a 0.3 millisecond response time, that is the MPRT or moving picture response time, which as I've talked about in a recent video, again links in the cards above, isn't exactly the best number to, to be quoting to or comparing against. In my testing, it took the panel around three milliseconds to go from black to white, and actually from white to black, which is almost always longer, more like 10. That's with the maximum overdrive setting set to speed, and there actually wasn't much overshoot, which is actually a really good thing, and means that despite the three millisecond response time, there was next to no ghosting. Take a look at the UFO test, you can see there is maybe one frame worth of trailing here, but realistically, there really isn't much. And that's very clear in games because this thing is disgustingly smooth and crisp. If you're wondering about the input lag, testing with my Time Sleuth directly on the monitor and at 1080p, which is the maximum the Time Sleuth will do in over HDMI, it was recording around two milliseconds or just a hair over at the top of the display. That's definitely not bad. It's not the fastest I've seen as even the Acer VG271UP was reading more like one millisecond and I've even had some at around 0.5, but it's certainly nowhere near the worst as some of those I've seen are more like 10, so it's plenty fine. Also testing the total system input lag, that was roughly or at least averages out to around 25 milliseconds. That is from a mouse click to seeing a gunfire in-game in CSGO, and again, that's not the fastest, but it's also far from the slowest and well within a, an acceptable tolerance. Of course, you will still need an incredibly powerful graphics card to run this thing, especially if you want to get the benefit from that 240Hz refresh rate. Now, I'm using an RX 480 that's strapped to the bottom of this table, which means that the only game that I can reasonably run at over 240fps is CSGO, so that's what I'll be playing. The thing is that CSGO is pretty much the exact type of game you'd want to play on this style of monitor at that sort of ultra high refresh rate, and it works really well. This thing is insanely smooth and fluid, and I was hitting shots that I wouldn't otherwise hit. Uh, my accuracy was definitely improved, which considering that my general ability in CSGO isn't great, is a, a welcome step up. I actually really enjoyed playing on the monitor. It was a, a very, like I said, smooth and responsive experience, but it was also just very fun to play, especially because I was feeling like I was playing a little bit better than I normally would. I'm still not sure that I would personally spend my own money on a 240 hertz panel like this over spending literally half the price on something like the Acer VG271UP or even the Gigabyte M27Q, but it was a very, very good experience nonetheless. One feature the monitor is technically missing is the ability to enable aim stabilizer, aka backlight strobing or ultra low motion blur, 
and FreeSync at the same time. That's something that a couple of ASUS monitors have as features available, but isn't available here. As you can see from the on-screen menu with FreeSync enabled, the aim stabilizer option is blacked out. Now, personally, I'm actually not too fussed about this because I never enable those sorts of ultra low motion blur or backlight strobing effects as I get headaches pretty much instantly when I turn them on. But it would be a nice feature and help it propel itself to the, the true ultimate in class rather than just amazing but technically missing something. I would mention though that the panel is pretty much fast enough without that enabled so it really doesn't matter all that much but like I said would be nice to see if they could implement that in say a future revision. As for the rest of the monitor it's pretty much identical to the FI27Q-P, in fact it even has the exact same stand. It does mean that you have plenty of RGB, including on both the stand and the back of the monitor, although it's pretty subtle, it's not in your face about it, and you can disable it in the menu, so all good there. The stand has plenty of adjustability, from tilt to a bit of swivel on the, the knuckle on the back. It's a bit of a weird one, but it works just fine. You also have height adjust, and you can rotate the display to portrait mode as well. You also have a VESA, a VESA mount hidden behind the sort of mounting brackets and plenty of I.O. You have a headphone and microphone jacks, uh, two HDMI ports and a display port and a USB 3 hub based on two, uh, two USB 3 ports, which is plenty, especially if you want to use, say, both new consoles and the gaming PC. Now colors wise, I personally couldn't get it to run the full 100% Adobe RGB they quote, nor the 93% of DCI-P3. The maximum I got with my Spider X was around 87% DCI-P3, but I put that down to the accuracy of the Spider X and the numerous amounts of color settings that you can really spend an entire day sitting down and tinkering to get just right. With that said, despite the slight discrepancy there, I would still be very happy to use this for editing, especially videos. It is an incredibly vibrant display, which is great, but also that coverage is well over 100% of sRGB, which is what a lot of you know, designers are designing in, so I'm not too worried about it. It is technically lacking some brightness if you want to do anything in the HDR world, from content creation to content consumption and gaming, but personally, I'm not too offended by that. It peaks at 400 nits, so that's fine for SDR workflows and SDR content, but if you care about HDR, this technically isn't the panel for you. For me, it's kind of remarkable that a 240Hz 1440p gaming monitor can also be such a good option for content creators. And the fact that it's not exorbitantly more expensive than its 165Hz-P counterparts at only about £100 more, well, consider me impressed. I'd be more than happy to use this as my primary monitor, although I would need a graphics card upgrade as most of the games I play only get between 100 and 140 FPS at my current setup with a uh, 2080. I'd probably want a 3080 or maybe a 3090 uh, to, to get the most out of this. But overall, uh, considering the, the colors and considering the input lag and the panel's uh, response time, I'd be very happy to use this, even if it's not at the full 240 hertz. So if you're looking for what is essentially the ultimate 1440p gaming monitor, this is pretty much it. Technically it is missing a couple of extra fancy features and a bit of brightness if you care about HDR, but for the vast majority of gamers who don't, well, this is pretty much all you're looking for. I'm also very glad that it's not well over a thousand pounds. In fact, the markup between the, the Dash P and this Dash X really isn't all that massive. So good job, Aorus there. And like I said, while I would probably still spend literally half the price on an M27Q or Acer VG271UP instead, like I said, if you're after the best of the best, Go pick one of these up. Now, if you do want to pick one of these up or just check out pricing when and where you watch this, because it can and does vary, check out the top link in the description down below. That's an Amazon affiliate link that will take you to your local Amazon store where you can see all that good stuff. I'd also love to hear your thoughts in the comments down below. What do you think of the FI27Q-X? Is this going to be your, your next monitor? Would you rather go with one of the cheaper Acer or Gigabyte models instead? Or are you sticking with 1080p or maybe ultrawides? Feel free to let me know in the comments down below. 
Also in the description are plenty of other links for ways to support the channel. There are uh, links for Patreon if you want to get access to our Money Men Discord chat, sponsor free videos, and of course you support me directly too. There's also merch or hoodies or t-shirts like this one or a load of other cool designs that I designed myself. Uh, or there are plenty of other affiliate links. If you're buying from places like Overclock GK, there's one down there for you too. There's VPN options and a load of other stuff, so feel free to check that out. Otherwise, that is pretty much it. Thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Feel free to leave any questions you have in the comments down below as well. We'll see you all in the next video.